Hello, welcome to The Market Carver. I'm Adam Harder, Chief Investment Officer, along with Zach Unger, our Senior Investment Analyst. Thank you, as always, for giving us your time here this week as we cover some of the topics uh, that we covered in this week's investment allocation meeting. we got three things for you this week. Zach's going to talk about a changing public market, really a, a pivotal piece in terms of how we have to think about the options available to us as investors. I'll cover uh, tips and really a case study for investing and how we can often get tripped up by kind of first level thinking and not digging deeper onto the second and third levels. And then take a look at energy trends, one of those longer term themes of things we have to pay attention to. So, Zach, uh, we'll tee it up here and let you uh, kick off and talk about a changing public market. Yeah, so the change we're going to talk about here is in the small cap market in particular on the public side. Uh, and so the main point really is that not all small cap allocations are created equal. Uh, the chart here in front of you, the orange line, is the Russell 2000, uh, which is the 2000 smallest companies of the Russell 3000. And the purple line there is the S&P 600, which is a, a small cap allocation uh, designed by the S&P. Uh, the difference here between the two allocations, or at least the indices uh, that make up the allocations, the S&P 600 has a committee that collaborates on what makes up the indices. So the 600 companies that go into the S&P 600 are not chosen at random, but are actually chosen very specifically. While Whereas the Russell 2000, the 2000 smallest companies of the Russell 3000, uh, there's not a decision made. It's simply the smallest 3000 or the smallest 2000 companies of the broader index. Um, so why that's important, right now we're actually seeing record levels in the Russell 2000, that orange line there, of companies that are unprofitable. Um, and a lot of that is, is a change in the landscape of companies coming to public market. Now, there's access to capital in private markets, which is, has made the decision for uh, companies going public much more difficult, um, it's simply easier to stay private for longer to access capital. And so uh, what we're seeing is that when indices like the Russell 2000 simply take the lowest or the smallest rather 2000 companies in an index, um, they are exposing themselves to less quality companies. Whereas the S&P 600 uh, with the committee that makes the decision can lean towards the stronger companies in the S&P 600. Uh, that is in part the quality companies staying private for longer that is, is in part the thesis, or at least the foundation of a thesis for private equity allocation, uh, which we do have access to through our Core Plus offerings. Uh, a couple different options in there that are worth talking to your advisor about to see if they would be a fit. Um, but overall, the, the main take home is that not all small cap allocations are created equal. And, and uh, just for your knowledge, our portfolios, when we do have small cap allocations, uh, favor the S&P 600 or ETFs that are designed to mirror the S&P 600. So we are making sure that we're getting those high quality small cap companies in the portfolio. Yeah, thank you, Zach. Uh, excellent job there. Uh, it's just, uh, this has really followed my career path uh, back in 2001, after we had uh, several large corporate bankruptcies, MCI, uh, Enron, we had uh, the act, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, uh, which really added layers and layers of regulate, regulation, well, meaning regulation that put a lot of uh, pressure and things, uh, handcuffs on, sometimes literally, uh, executives of public companies. And that's just one of the things that made it more difficult to to go public. And just over that time frame, over the uh, two decades plus now that I've been in the business, I've seen the total number of companies that are public uh, be smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, some of that is is bigger players buying up the smaller ones, and gaining scale. And the other pieces, some companies just don't want to go public in, in many ways. I can't blame them. Uh, so we'll pivot down. We'll talk about tips. Now, we are coming on the heels of just exiting really this, this era of super high inflation that we saw flare up in 2021 and, and hit uh, peaks in 2022, kind of on the way back down now. Uh, but really reflect at, at one of the investments that is out there to uh, protect investors from inflation. That is Treasury Inflation Protected Securities. I think this just plays a theme of something that we see over and over and over again in the investment world, whether it's stocks or bonds or real estate, whatever you have. The better something performs, what happens is money begins to flow into that. Uh, and so you will see the average investor return be far lower 
than what the underlying asset class had because they weren't there in the beginning, the middle, and the end. They were simply there at the beginning, uh, or excuse me, in the middle, as the returns had already been built up and uh, only to exit as, as they go on the backside. And so this is one of those, uh, another examples of, of you just can't look at the surface uh, and think on, on level one and dig deeper instead of level two that we call it. We have to think a little bit deeper because you would think treasury inflation protected securities would be an excellent place to park uh, and hide money during a high inflationary environment. Now, we did not lean on this because in general, we were very defensive against rising rates. And this is just to show that this illustrates that rising rates is the underlying driver for those returns. So on the left panel here, we see the actual cumulative return of those TIPS bonds. Uh, it, it began to soar in 2021, 2022, as interest rates stayed low. Um, but then it began to unwind and perform very poorly as interest rates rose. On the right panel shows you the cumulative flows from investors. Uh, so there was very little activity, but it began to swell as people began to look for things that were inflation protected, sometimes just uh, leaning on the name itself, uh, only to see the performance begin to wane and they flee back out of the fund. So uh, even though the investment returns were modestly positive, by and large, the average investor had a negative return because they flowed in at the wrong time. Now, tips, uh, it is worth noting that did well relative to their unfl inflation protected uh, brethren, uh, but if you're just looking uh, to be <laughs> plain vanilla, protected from inflation as opposed to, say, cash, it was not quite the same uh, alternative. So now uh, we'll pivot again and talk about energy transformation. Uh, we know that this is uh, happening around the world uh, and in the U.S. especially. We know that half of you watching this are, are very happy about this and another half uh, really kind of grumble and, and don't like to see uh, the pressure that's put on our power grid and everything else that EVs may cause. Our job uh, is to look at these trends and find ways to make profitable investments. And it's something we have to keep uh, in mind. But you can see on the, in the left part of this uh, chart, we can look at what the composition of power inside the United States has. And the bottom a piece of that, the yellow, is renewables, primarily wind and solar, uh, gaining an ever and ever so larger share of the total energy production on the right are really a series of the targets set by the Biden administration, uh, often a little lofty. Uh, so you could take a look, and I won't read all of these to you, but the important ones, uh, the battery electric vehicles goal, uh, right now we're right around, uh, I think, 10%, uh, something like that, in terms of the total sales of ele electric vehicles. And the goal is to get that up to 50 by the end of the decade, an enormous uh, shift in the way that we use and have the power grid in this country. So it remains to be seen if we hit that, but we are on what would be known as an S-curve an engineer would use uh, to reach that. And of course, you need uh, on the right panel there a lot of EV uh, charging stations to make that happen, uh, all in the efforts on the bottom there uh, to reduce our total carbon emissions. So this does have investment implications, both in terms of how we view public utilities, right? They uh, have several profitable ways to deploy capital ahead of them uh, to meet this. But we all have, also have to look at companies that are involved in this transformation, particularly uh, a couple of areas we like. <clears throat> uh, carbon sequestration is one that has is, is really uh, been booming, went from a 350 million annual sales in 2022 to well over a billion uh, inside 2023. So we have a couple of companies in the portfolio very heavily positioned in that carbon capture uh, environment. So that is just something that we have to you know, tie and, and peg our investment themes going forward. So, hey, those are the three things we covered this week. As always, we'll give you a reminder here to give us a call if we can be of service, 1-800-928-4001, uh, or scan the QR code to book it electronically. And as always, uh, thank you and have a great weekend.